All right. Hey there. Thanks for um, checking out the Design to Make a Difference website and looking into uh, the 2021-2022 the school year um, for the Design to Make a Difference program, our project themes. Um, in years past, if you've participated with before, we've always kind of, you know, trying to give you themes to work around. We want this to be as student and teacher centered as possible. We don't want to tell you what to work on. Um, but, you know, we want to give you some guidelines as well. So, you know, for our fifth year, um, we came up with this kind of play on the on the, the STEAM acronym. And, and we want you to figure out how you're going to put the A back in STEAM with design to make a difference. Um, so we just came up with a bunch of, you know, A terms that you could incorporate CAD modeling, 3D printing, design, um, product development, even maybe computer science, um, anything to do with maker ed and use it, apply it to other genres that you might already be teaching or might be interested in teaching. Um, whether you're a science teacher, math teacher, art teacher, uh, English teacher, whatever type of teacher, um, that should not get in the way of you doing this type of work. So these are just some of the A's that we have come up with. Agriculture, anatomy, architecture, alternative energy, acoustics, automation, aeronautics, assisted devices, augmented reality, arithmetic, art preservation, and accessibility. And we're going to spend a little bit of time on this video to go through just some of those examples, just using pictures um, to talk about what you might be able to do with your students. So the first is architecture. This is probably one of the bigger areas of 3D printing, no pun intended, um, using machines that instead of, you know, kind of spitting out plastic, they, you know, eject concrete in a specific path. And this is gaining a lot of popularity because you can make accessible, affordable housing quickly uh, using, you know, very strong materials like concrete. Now, you wouldn't go about doing that, right? But you might be able to design, um, you know, a building plan. You might be able to say like, hey, this is the thing we would build. I'm building it out of plastic, but here's why I chose this design. Maybe it, you know, optimizes this space. Maybe it provides, um, you know, better environmental uh, standards. Um, maybe you look at 3D printed structures and then you figure out what to put on the outside. Um, some type of fabric, foam, some type of uh, wood versus stone. So, you know, if you have an architecture unit, if you were trying to, you know, add an architecture unit and you thought that would fit in, if you have students who are interested in architecture, it's kind of one of those interdisciplinary subjects that um, is, is kind of ripe for that idea of 3D modeling and 3D printing. Um, uh, another aerospace, um, we've actually had some some groups in the past do stuff with something to do with aerospace, whether it's rocketry design, um, where you're not using necessarily like a kit, but you have the kids design from scratch their, their own rockets for whatever reason. Maybe you're learning about aerodynamics. Um, the same thing goes with the wing design. The picture at the bottom represents like a cross section of the wing. Maybe you can have the kids and challenge them to make the, you know, the most efficient and effective you know, shell of a wing, and then you can attempt to find a way to test to see which ones work the best. Um, you can design and print gliders and have the kids go outside and do maybe a physics lesson on how far they went. Um, all the way up to like kind of, if you're into like the robotics and drones, you can make custom um, printed parts for those. So again, this is maybe something you're interested in. Just got to find a way to kind of tie it back to this idea of how, how can we help others uh, in need, population, specific people, uh, that kind of stuff. So it's definitely not a stretch. Uh, this is one of my favorites. It all depends on the technology you have. Um, do you have a 3D scanner or not? Or do you have, you know, kids who are kind of capable of reverse engineering parts? It doesn't always have to be a part that goes into a machine or that, you know, does something. It, it can be, you know, just art. So what you have here is an example of a piece of art that was broken, it was scanned, and then it was redesigned, and they 3D printed a part to go over top of it. In the top right, you just have access to art. Maybe you can't get to the Louvre, right? But they might have put some of the 3D scans of the artwork there that you can then print up and teach your kids about um, art history, art appreciation, art techniques. 
My favorite one, though, is the one in the bottom, um, the one that looks like a piece of furniture where you threw in some 3D printed parts. Um, it's an attempt to um, minimize the ivory trade and the effects on elephants. So they found different types of plastics and resins that mimic the look, feel, and kind of uh, um, outward appearance of ivory. And then you can kind of recreate some of this work and have that ivory look without having to worry about um, endangering elephants and rhinos and whatever other animals you're looking at. Anatomy is, is one of the more popular areas where 3D design and modeling and printing are, are, are kind of taking off. Um, a friend of mine is an orthopedic surgeon and he 3D prints um, different parts of, of, you know, bones and then teaches his students, you know, why they would want to do a certain type of surgery over another because of the, the situation that the bones are in and they never need to have the access to the actual bones. Um, if you're looking at maybe an evolution project and you want to look at the evolution of humans through their skulls, you can find a lot of these files online. Um, if you want to look at prosthetics or orthotics, that's a play on anatomy as well. And you can have kids try to design cheap, effective, efficient casts, braces, splints. And then I don't know why this just came to me as I was coming up with this presentation. It would be awesome to have like an operation game where like the bones really look the way they were supposed to. Um, that could be like a really cool, like CS, you know, sensors and circuits and buzzers. Uh, but instead of there being like, you know, the funny bone looks like a bone that like my dog would chew on from a comic book. Um, you can actually kind of tailor the different parts to be like real anatomy. I don't know, I think that would be kind of like a fun game. One of the first things we ever did when we, 3D printed anything way back when is we developed speakers for our phones. Um, it was a really cool project and, and the area of acoustics and the unique shapes that you can design and then 3D print is, is an area of CAD modeling and printing that hasn't been explored that much, at least at the high school level that I've seen. So what you have at the top are different shapes and the sound travels through those shapes in different ways. And there's a lot of sound equipment out there that, that isn't expensive that you could get if you wanted some like quantitative data. Um, you have to the right different shapes to try to um, deaden the sound, to absorb sound, to create a room that maybe is, is um, better for maybe singing or recording. And you can kind of play with the design in the printer and then test those different designs to see which gives you the kind of acoustic settings you're looking for. And then you just have some unique speaker shapes um, where you kind of plug a speaker into it and then it kind of reverberates the sound in a unique way. So if you are more of like a music teacher looking to do something with sound, maybe in physical science or physics, um, all the way down to elementary school when you're looking to do something with sound and sound waves. It's a really cool way to kind of introduce kids to acoustics and have them design, experiment and learn from those um, experiences. This is our go-to um, for, especially for new teams. You don't have to be a new team because every year you might have new kids and it's new to them. Um, assist, assistive devices, hard to say. Um, probably one of the most popular areas of CAD and 3D printing uh, because it has this direct impact on people. So top right, you might have someone who doesn't have the dexterity to grab a pen, but they can grab onto some bigger device and you can help them hold that pen. In very similar ways, you might have someone who has arthritis and can't open up a bottle and you can design a, a tool that helps them. Um, the bottom left, there might be somebody who, you know, handshakes a little bit and they have trouble getting the key in the, to the lock and this, you know, two finger design might help them. And then to the right, you know, someone who maybe doesn't have the dexterity needed to do the video game control, you might be able to develop, um, you know, attachments to the buttons that help um, kids, adults, whoever, right? Um, you know, play those games. So those are all fit under the category assistive devices. And then one of the carryovers from last year, um, people really liked the fact that we had a category last year called make it with math. And I just found my A word arithmetic. So if that was something you're into and you wanted to continue on this year, you easily could. There's a lot of math, math manipulatives, again, difficult words to say, that 
you can come up with and help um, your students learn math. You can challenge the kids to come up with to showcase what they know, maybe not in the traditional quiz or test sense, but in the way of like, hey, I built this thing and this is how I understand my uh, mathematical concepts. So you have anything for manipulatives that help you understand addition to dice that might help you understand probability to different types of wave functions. The top right is a really cool feature that allows you to do like times tables to, to figure out if you're right or wrong, gear ratios, um, fractions through pie pieces. So there's a lot out there. Um, and again, this might tie into something you're already doing, so it doesn't feel like it has to be something separate um, that takes the place of something. It can add on to something that you're already doing. Uh, this year, we want to we wanna welcome like CS projects more than we have in the past. Um, we're waiting on our grant to see if we can fund any of these projects. But right now, if you think you're a school that can do CS at this level, or you want to you know, move away from the CAD modeling, the printing, that might not be your thing. That's fine. Um, another big area of maker education has to do with uh, kind of physical computing robotics side. So I just have some examples here. The top right uh, is a robot that somebody designed that can recognize different colored shapes. So it'll grab the yellow versus the red container. And that might be a way to like automate a production line, right? Um, the bottom right is an uh, is a nightlight that will change colors based on um, light levels. So there's a photoreceptor and it's programmed that as the day goes on, different colors of light come on, right? You have this automated nightlight, which is pretty cool. And then one of the classic ones that, that we've seen some students present at other uh, competitions or other um, challenges is a way to kind of automate agriculture. So in this case, you have a schematic of a plant with sensors and the microcontroller can read how wet the soil is. And then you program that at a certain level to turn a pump on that would then water the plant. And then the pump would turn off after either a set time or a set um, you know, water level was reached. So if you're thinking you're getting into kind of that CS and you're looking for something to do with microcontrollers and automation, we'd love to see those types of projects uh, brought to design to make a difference. And those are just some of the examples. Um, if you think you have an A that wasn't shown here, if you want to, you know, contact us and ask us some questions about some of the other A's that you've seen, uh, anything that puts that A back in steam, we're excited to see what you do with your students and uh, the problems and solutions that you're able to come up with. So hope that helped. And if uh, you want to register for this year's program, uh, there should be a link um, underneath this video or up in the uh, kind of menu. Or go ahead and give us a, a ring on email that is at design to make a difference. Um, at gmail.com, excuse me, designed to make a difference at gmail.com. So awesome. Thanks.